Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing Poochie. Wardell Faust was born on July 22nd, 1960 in Louisville, Kentucky. His family moved to Compton, California in the mid 70s, where he lived on Bradfield Street on the east side of Compton. Poochie was violent at an early age. On February 11th, 1975, at around 6 p.m., Poochie was involved in a physical altercation with another male outside a home on South Harris Street in Compton. After losing the fist fight, Poochie returned home and obtained a shotgun. He then had his stepfather drive him back to the scene, at which time Poochie fired the weapon at the Johnson home. Poochie was only 14 years old. During that period in his teenage years, he became a Ludus Park Pyro gang member. Ludus Park Pyro, also known as the 577 Gang, is a black American gang located on the east side of Compton. Poochie grew up in the heart of their territory, which stretches from Compton Boulevard to Rosecrans, between Bullis and Atlantic Avenue. Poochie also spent time living in San Bernardino, California on January 7th, 1991, at around 2 a.m. Paris and his girlfriend were asleep in their San Bernardino home when Poochie and Floyd, armed with handguns, entered their home and demanded money. They then proceeded to tie the couple's hands and feet and shut their mouths with duct tape. Poochie and Floyd allegedly took Paris to another area of the house where he was beaten before being shot numerous times. His girlfriend was shot in the head and left for dead. Four children were in the house at the time of the shooting. Poochie was introduced to Suge Knight through George E. Williams, and he was by far the most feared in Suge's inner circle. Poochie went on to be Suge's favorite hitman, and Poochie would carry out various shootings for him. Suge rewarded him with cars, houses, and cash, standing in only 5'5 five five and weighing a buck 50. Poochie's size didn't stop him from being a deadly enforcer. Poochie was known as the quiet, loner type. He never showed emotion and barely smiled but got enjoyment on speaking on murders he committed. He never wanted to be involved with the police and always kept a low profile. Most people wouldn't know of his whereabouts. He was hardly seen in his hood or at the death row studio. In fact, he hated the studio. His peers thought that he didn't even like music. People in the studio could feel the energy shift and some felt uncomfortable in his presence, claiming that he gave off eerie vibes. In 1993, Officer Reggie White Jr. arrested Pucci during that arrest, it was discovered Pucci had a large quantity of cocaine with an AK and was getting ready to shoot somebody. Pucci was going by his alias name Darnell Jones and was able to get out of jail shortly after. In 1995, a man known as Rat, a member of the bounty hunter Watts Bloods, allegedly purposely crossed Shook's path. He apparently was pressing Shook for a record deal and he, along with 10 bounty hunters, cornered Shook in the bathroom on the set of the Crackham video shoot. Shook allegedly ordered Poochie to kill Rat, and Rat was killed in an exchange of gunfire on Central 134th. Authorities arrived and found Rat laying in the street dead, with AK-47 bullets everywhere. Soon after that killing, Poochie's name came up in another murder at the Nickerson Garden Housing Projects. Smoothie had been found dead, with gang writing carved into his chest. Smoothie was allegedly murdered because he was suspected of killing the brother of Marcus Nunn, a leader of the prison-based United Blood Nation. Marcus allegedly contacted Shook to have Smoothie killed, and Shook ordered Poochie to carry out the hit, and allegedly, Poochie was more than happy to do it. After Tupac was murdered, Shook wanted to send out a message. Not only did Shook love Pac, but he was his moneymaker. Shook was robbed on a personal and professional level. Shook ended up going to jail on a probation violation, stemming from the beatdown of Orlando Anderson in the MGM Grand Hotel. While Shook was in jail, he conspired with his girlfriend, Teresa. Shook gave her the direction to get Poochie. Shook's girlfriend posed as a secretary for Shook's lawyer, and that's how he was able to communicate with her. Shook would send his lawyer off to have a smoke, while Shook and Teresa whispered to each other about getting Biggie. Shook's girlfriend and Poochie agreed to terms, and he received two payments, one for $9,000 and one for $4,000. Shook then had his mob goons track Biggie's whereabouts, while he was in LA promoting the Life After Death album on March 9th, 1997. Biggie and his entourage left to buy a magazine party in three SUVs at approximately 12.30 a.m. Poochie laid in wait outside the Peterson Automotive Museum. Biggie's SUV stopped at a red light on Wilshire and Fairfax Avenue. As soon as Poochie became aware of where Biggie was sitting in his car, he allegedly drove up and fired shots before vanishing into the night. Biggie was shot four times and died at the hospital at 1.15 a.m. George Williams' associate Lil Rod 
later admitted in a prison letter that it was Poochie who shot Biggie. George Williams and Sugar eventually had a falling out, which started one Sunday during a picnic at Gonzalez Park in Compton. George told people that Heron, who was a close associate of Suge, shot at him and tried to kill him. At that point, eyewitnesses saw Poochie, George, and two other gang members follow Heron out the picnic. Heron proceeded to drive off with a man named Allen. Allen had also been a witness to Tupac's murder. As Heron was blocked in by traffic, two men in George's car jumped out into the main intersection, armed with automatic weapons, and opened fire. Heron was killed at the scene. This shooting was a bold move that took place in broad daylight in front of numerous witnesses. Neither George or Pucci went down for the Heron murder. One of the passengers in his car, a man named Roderick, was the only person convicted of the Heron murder. By this point, George E. Williams switched sides on Suge and became an enforcer for Lil Rod, who was the leader of the Fruit Town Pyrus. Lil Rod had evolved into a nationwide PCP dealer. One day, he had a large amount of drugs stolen, and as a result, Lil Rod was hell-bent on revenge. The theft involved a friend of Pucci named Willie Walker. On April 4th, 2000, Willie Walker and Pucci were sitting in a van on a dead-end street in Compton. A black male then emerges from the cut and begins to spray the car with bullets. Willie, also known as the Chin, was killed, and Pucci was shot, but he survived the attack. He was in a wheelchair for about five months. Pucci refused to cooperate with the police. Both men were near Lil Rod's house when it happened, and everyone on that street seemed to know that Lil Rod was behind it. Retaliation came soon after. Three weeks later, Lil Rod's friend, a man named Vince, was subsequently kidnapped by men who were dressed as police officers. He was then tortured on video, murdered, and dumped at a cemetery in Compton. Police found him with two gunshot wounds to the back. Pucci and a man named David were allegedly responsible. A few months later, on September 22, 2000, Lil Rod and Jerome, also known as Snake, were driving on the 91 freeway when they are allegedly tracked down by Pucci and Willie's brother Eric. Several AK-47 rounds were fired at Lil Rod and Snake, and Snake ultimately died from multiple gunshot wounds. On July 24th, 2003, Pucci was racing his motorcycle down Central Avenue in Compton when allegedly Lil Rod got behind him in a car and released a hail of gunfire from AK-47. Pucci was shot 10 times in the back and died as a result. He was 43 years old. Many people were surprised that he lived to be this age, considering the type of life he lived. He has allegedly been tied to several other murders that were never proven, including the murder of Elm Street Pyro OG Stoney, when allegedly Pucci walked him down a broad day. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.